our city now, Austin. Our town. <laughs> this, this, what is this, a, a Twitch? <laughs> what is this fucking program? Hi. <laughs> um. Ooh. Ooh. What's okay. up? How's it going? Um, it's the Cenotaph, but like a vignette version of the Cenotaph. It's just, it's just me, Sasha, um, and ends on, Sa on Twitter at Sasha underscore though, and Ray. Hi, I'm Ray. Uh, they, he, Twitter, Ray Ray the gay gay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, Scarecrow and Pitchfork are dead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our town. <laughs> Yes. Um, so uh, this is, I think, a stream because of scheduling issues, actually. Um, so uh, this stream, as always, is presented by You Don't Meet in an Inn, an actual play podcast about exploring obscure tabletop role-playing games with a diverse, rotating cast. You can find it on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Um, and that was the cleanest uh, part of the intro because Austin wrote it down for me. Thank you, Austin. Um, Today we'll be playing A Long Night in the Mech Bay um, by uh, Magpie Mary Test. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you can, where can we find this on, on itch.io, itch Ray? Uh, yeah. oh, I didn't have the itch page. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Give me I like also, five seconds. Yep. Uh huh. I was going to vamp. Um, yep. <laughs> Oh. Yep. Uh, you can find it on itch.io uh, at nestedgames.itch.io. Uh, it is a very cool game. It looks very interesting. I'm really excited to play it. Um, so this takes place uh, right after the last downtime session. There was um, so much to do in that, and, and the bit that we didn't, that I personally didn't get to was... Um, repairing my mech, or uh, repairing the magpie, so we figured it would be perfect for this. Um, and so we slot that right in into the canon right there, so. Yeah, I also will note that this game has a pre-established setting uh, that looks very interesting and very cool, but which we are ignoring <laughs> because <laughs> it's stuck. <laughs> um. So while there is some very interesting setting stuff in here uh, that looks very cool, uh, and you should like check it out, uh, you should get the game and check it out. We are going to be setting this within the canonical cenotaph. Mm -hmm. Game? Timeline? Hmm. The canon. The canon. The canonical canon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So do you um, want to read through the the um the thing the text the which goddamn thing? game or should I? <laughs> oh, sorry, it's fine. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, a long night in the mech bay, a two-player RPG about relationships forged during a mech war. Um. So, um, I, I'm sort of picking through the um the bits that are the rules and the bits that are flavor text. Um, again, the flavor text is really good. It's just not useful for us in this case. Um, so one of you is the ace pilot who barely escaped with their life in their recent incident. And the other is uh, the, I guess, I can't replace nouns quickly, sorry, is the best mechanic who's seen more than their fair share of action. Sadly, there is no time for bonding. This mech needs to be ready to fight tomorrow, and no one else is available to help. It's going to be a long night. Um, so we need two players to copy this game. Uh, several tokens with similar appearance, which we have on the roll twenty. Yeah, um, I just, I, I can you check that you can interact with those? By the way, I cannot. Ah, I don't know how to do that. Um. Um. Shit. <laughs> Thing in tokens, I think, if you back back click it and then look at that menu. Oh yes, I'm big dumb baby. Mm -hmm. do, do, do. And we'll also need a four sided dice. It's a four sided die. Oh. I think that's just for character creation. 
That's true. Okay. Ah, yes. And you do it now? No. Yeah, I can move one of them. Yeah, this one I can move. Ah, fucking roll 20. <laughs> you might have to do that individually. I don't know. Roll 20. Okay. It's a uh, program that I've used for more than a year and don't understand at all. Can you do the one I just moved? Okay, yes you can. So I just need to delete the original and we have to make copies of this one. Okay. Cool beans. <laughs> because Roll20 is a program. Mm -hmm. um, so, for setup, while, while you're doing that, I can, I can read out. Um, between the two of you, decide who will be the mechanic and who will be the pilot. Um, mechanic, pick your nickname. Pilot, pick your call sign. Then roll or pick an item from the three lists below. Um, both players should add a detail elaborating on each item selected. Um, we already have names and call signs, so that works out nicely. Um, mine is uh, C. Bellevue, also uh, more commonly called Dredge, um, and Dredge is my call sign. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Mine is uh, Blackberry uh, Reach, but no, no one calls them Blackberry. They're just tower, and that's their call sign. Mm -hmm. Because oh. I realized tower was a better name, like, too late in the game to actually change it. Listen. Oh. That, that's, that's what call signs are for, so that yep. you don't have to be called anything else. Yay! Sometimes you fall into a name, you know? Yeah, that's how it be. Mm -hmm. uh, next, describe the mechanic and pilot's relationship. The options are close companions, former foes, star-crossed soulmates, or previously partners. Hmm. I mean, how... Out of these specifically, how do we describe that? I think... It's either close companions or previously partners, with partners in the professional sense. Yeah, because I think, like... I think previously partners in a professional sense works because at least I, I know the sort of narrative is leading from one to the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at least how I've been looking at it. Uh, do you think that works? Yeah, I'm happy with that. And I think we can uh, we can always change it halfway through play. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. We feel like it. Everything is mutable. Yep. Um, Yay. The pilot and mech barely survived a vicious battle, lethal duel, cruel betrayal, or crushing defeat. Oh boy. Um. A, cr a cruel betrayal? Kind of? Yeah. There isn't um an option for just a fucking mess. Um <laughs> yeah. that that mission we're talking specifically about um coming from the uh trying to find uh El Lady Elrith's cousin um and getting into it with the burden and and um and making sure that the uh or e extracting the the rubble runs from the bad situation they were in. Yeah, that was just a shit show. Just a shit show. Option five, shit show. <laughs> uh, I mean, also, like, uh, cruel betrayal um, in a more overarching narrative sense. Uh, like, or at least I think that's how Tower sees it. <laughs> Tower, eh, Tower fucks up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't directly your fault, but you were involved. Um, yeah, multiple certainly. times. Mm -hmm. Just just a lot. Um, soon, the pilot must face our thing. God, <laughs> I'm sorry, proper nouns are such a bitch. Um, in a, um, I guess in our case, it's the March of Saints, right? Um, yeah. Or the Quinlan Red dive. Yeah. Um, in in a, beleaguered final battle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's the one. Or almost final anyway, depending on what kind of fate Austin decides for us. 
<laughs> Afterward, introduce yourself to the other person, describe your look, and say what you most desire. <sighs> what you most desire? Shit. That's a big question. Yeah. Does this... Do you think this is what what the character thinks they most desire or what they actually most desire? Um, it, it's, it seems like it's in character. Introduce yourself to the, to the other person, not, your, not introduce your character to the other person. So I'd say what they would say is their, their, their biggest want. Um. <laughs> yeah, because those are two very different answers. Mm-hmm. I think Dredge, who is um, who is very scarred up from um, from being on fire, um, a lot. This is the, sort of the tail end of of that session, so like has healed to a, a pretty decent extent, but is still um, still bandaged. So um, you know, those wounds don't heal in a month. That takes time. Um, uh, but is mobile and um, able to do things. Um, and I think that what Ko wants is like very narrow, narrowly focused at this point. It's like, I just want for everybody to survive this next bit. Just need to get through this one last thing and then we can focus on, you know, actually improving our situation. Just, just over the, one more hill. Just, yeah. just past this one more hill. Yeah. I think Tower right now uh, looks just exhausted. Like, they've been like, I think they've still, like, got they've got, like, little, like, burn marks all over their hands from, like, cooking and stuff, because <clears throat> they spent this whole last uh, downtime just, like, trying to feed people and, like, stop, you know, like, stacking corpses in dorm rooms and shit. Like, they're just, they're just wiped out. Mm -hmm. um, and so their, their hair, which is normally sort of very neatly, like, braided down their back, is kind of, like, kind of floofing out a little bit. It's, like... It's like doing that thing where the braid is like a week old, but it's just kind of still, maybe not a week, that's a little much, but like, it's like been in for a couple of days and it's just very sort of, they have not had time to redo it. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've been getting like four hours at most of sleep a night. They're, they're done. Yeah. And right now I think what they would say they want most is some peace and fucking quiet. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I just think they're wiped. Yeah, that makes sense. And they're not going to get it. They're not, did, no, <laughs> I mean, they're not even kind of. No, oh. but I can dream. So the session is structured around three minigames, Reveries Part 1, Reveries Part 2, and Testing the Waters. Uh, play through each minigame in order using the instructions provided below. Um, so, Reverie's Part 1 for Scars. Um, the setup is Pilot asks the mechanic how the mech bay appears. Mechanic asks the pilot how the mech became badly damaged. So, I'm guessing you're playing Mechanic? Yeah. Okay. Even so, though, sort of in, in the Beam Saber fiction, it would probably be the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> so, what does the mech bay look like? I think, because our mech bay is that old, cleared-out barn, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I think... I can't remember if it's winter right now. It is, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I think there's, like, 
there are a couple places around the sort of sides of the barn where there's like snow just slowly trickling in through the roof mm. um and it's like it's old there are like big bins of just like parts and like nuts and bolts and shit just lying around it looks kind of like a like a high school wood shop classroom but with mechs mm. um or at least my high school workshop classroom. Uh, and I think it's... It's been getting a lot of use in the past couple of weeks. It's been really sort of being put through its paces. I think, like, all of our all of these are uh, in there, so... Hmm. Um, and I, I kind of like the mental image of... Unless this is your question, in, in which case I will... Uh, shut up but uh, I think I think it's not uh, but I think the magpie is just sort of curled up like how a cat does <laughs> um, and it's just sort of sitting like off to one side and there are all of our mechs just sort of yeah it's just it's it's very it would be peaceful if it wasn't so like awkward <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Um, mechanic asked the pilot how the mech became badly damaged. I mean, you know, I think we kind of know the the gist of it, but what exactly can, happened? Yeah, I can run down the the damage. Um, For... I've del- I've deleted that all that stuff from my character sheet, so if I get it slightly wrong, um, don't at me. Um, but, um, it was, it was, um, torn up a bunch, I think. Yeah, there was, it it got a couple of, um, of abrasions going through, um, when it, like, wiggled into the department store. Um, uh, and when, um, when it was hit with a loose grenade it, it broke the um or at least at, at the very least bent out of shape um some of the mechanisms in the wrist um so um which specific wrist um we'll say the left front okay. um yeah so it's it's torn up it's it's really dusty it's like um its compartments need to be sanitized because it was just holding people recently. Um, yeah, it, it needs it needs some patches. That's what, that's what it looks like right now. Okay. Nice. So, um, during the conversation, uh, players alternate asking questions from the list below, triggering, triggering a shared reverie between the two characters. The more, the more frustrated person goes first. That's you. Mm. The player who was asked the question frames the new scene by describing the time and the location. Within the reverie, players may describe details from the past, engage in conversation, or narrate events in the scene. If at any point during the reverie, one person hurts the other in a memorable way, um, decided by the, re- recip- the recipient of the injury, the recipient takes a, a scar token. When both players agree that the reverie is over, snap or clap simultaneously, and the conversation in the next bay restarts. And the next person may ask a new question. Well, if the time that is clap is of any indication, that is not going to be simultaneous, but <laughs> we'll do our best. We will do our best. Uh, I'm just putting... Mm. Uh, in like two minutes, I'm just setting up little windows for us to put our tokens in to configure it how to use text and roll 20. <laughs> um, I can I can read the end game section which is um, after the player possesses at least one scar token discuss whether you wish to conclude this game when both players agree each each person voices their pain to an, to the other in a moment of vulnerability and weakness. After both of you have spoken, say no more and begin the next game. Um, so that's like the opening game, I guess. Cool. Yeah. Good shit. I will get back to doing this in a second. Um, like a competent role player. <laughs> uh... Alright. 
Um, I'm going to really quick restart OBS, apparently, uh, for our technical stuff. So we'll be right back. According to our Gungeon Master. <laughs> <laughs> 